questions 109 and 110. You should congratulate yourself. You're one of the few that made it right to the end. So when I tried these questions, I finished both in under a minute, but it took 10 times that amount of time to try to draw it out to make sure that you see the steps. I'm just trying to say that once you get comfortable with the rules of logarithms, questions like this become extremely straightforward. Of course, it just takes some practice, and it also underlines a very important strategy that when you have your reading time at the beginning of the exam to ensure that you look for straightforward questions and when the exam begins you answer those questions and actually fill in your answer document as you go along to ensure that you optimize your score and you don't let some straightforward questions at the end of the exam be left for guessing time when they could have been opportunities to pick up some easy marks. So to the question we are given various equations all of which ideally you would already know. But it's okay, Acer is being friendly, at least to start. And so the question is asking us for the relationship between KB and H3O+. Well, we are already given the equation for KB. And if you notice, all the answer choices have KW in it. So we know we will need the equation for KW because it also has H3O+. None of the answer choices have OH-. So it is quite obvious that we have to take the equation for Kw, isolate OH- and replace OH- by Kw over H3O+. And so the answer is A. Now comes the fun part because you get to use some logarithm rules. And typical Acer fashion, they allowed you to complete an action which is relatively simple and now you will use those rules to do something a little bit more complex. And so question 110 you are given some equations and then asked which of the following expresses pkb. So we know that pka is equal to negative log ka according to Acer, which of course means pkb is equal to negative log kb. And we have kb because we worked it out in the previous question. So all we have to do is take the negative log of both sides and that will give us pkb. So Let's take the negative log of KB, so I wrote it out here. And let's take the negative log of answer choice A from question 109, and I wrote that out here. Please keep in mind, the reason we're doing this is because we're seeking an expression for PKB. And so we need to take the negative log of KB. And now we just have to use our logarithm rules. When we have the logarithm of things that are multiplied, we can separate them and add them. And just as a precaution, I'm taking the negative sign out so we will deal with it later. On the real exam, I wouldn't take such precautions, but I want to be sure that you don't make any mistakes with the negative signs. And so we have log kw plus log of 1 divided by H3O plus because H3O plus is in the denominator, it's 1 over H3O plus and the other way of saying that, it's the inverse of H3O plus, or H3O plus to the exponent minus 1, plus what is left over. And so negative log KB is, of course, PKB. Now I will let the negative sign come in. And so negative log KW, negative, negative. And we know that negative log KW is PKW. Just like negative log hydrogen is pH, negative log OH- minus is pOH, negative log Ka is pKa, that little p represents negative log. And for log, the exponent here, the minus 1, can come down to the front, making this negative log H3O+, plus, but then the negative sign comes in, it makes that negative a negative, and so plus log H3O+. Plus. And finally, negative log BH plus over B. But I just finished saying that we have a negative of a negative log H3O plus. Negative log H3O plus is pH. So we really have negative pH. So we have pKB is equal to pKW minus pH minus log BH plus divided by B. And so the answer is B. What an epic way to end the exam by having a double negative, not as a metaphor, but in reality, 
Well done, Acer. And to improve your math skills or acids and bases, and don't forget, do lots of practice questions. Good luck.